With Zscale Private Access, the definition of an application is key to the function and the ability of you to define who gets access to what application. Zscale Private Access is all about providing access only to those applications that you want to enable. So let's go ahead and define an application. To do this, click on the administration menu on the left hand side and then on application segments. It is with these defined applications and the way in which we tie a user to an application access that differentiates Zscaler from other control access solutions. Within ZPA, an application is not limited to a singular function, IP address, domain name, or FQDN. Rather, we provide you, the administrator, with the ability to define your application landscape as specific or as granular or as wide as you would like. Let's go ahead and create a new application segment. To do that, click on the Add Application Segment in the top right-hand corner. So next, I'm going to define the application and what it is. In this case, we'll call it a CRM. Give it a description of CRM Server. Make sure that we have that enabled here and then move on to defining the application's IP space, host name, or so forth. As a pro tip, here is where Zscale Private Access has its true power. An application in Zscale Private Access is not limited to a singular IP address or domain or domain namespace. For example, if you have a corporate application where all functions of that application are defined within a subdomain, you could define that subdomain here. To do this, you can define a wildcard. So in this case, I'll define a wildcard of asterisk.crm.wentinovi.com. This essentially means that we now have an application segment that will hit and fire on any application that meets the prefix of this wildcard.crm.wentinovi.com. But what if you also wanted to include some load balance DNS names? Let's do that then. We click on add more, and I'm gonna add a load balancer. For example, let's call it CRM dash lb .com. I also have the ability to define the application IP space that this application might have access to. So here I'm going to add more once again, and this time I'm going to add an IP address. Rather, I'll start with a singular IP address, 10.0.0.1. And maybe I'd like to add an actual network space as well. So I will add 10.0.0.1 slash 24. Now these definitions can be defined in individual application rules or application segments. But this is the power of Zscale Private Access. You can define all of this in one application segment. So now that I've defined my hostname, FQDN, and IP address space of my application, I need to define the TCP and UDP ports. I can do this here. So very simply, we'll do everything as an example. You can actually be as specific as you'd like. In fact, I'm going to change this and make it just port 80. And then I'll add, maybe there's an SSH service in there somewhere. And what if the load balancer wants to talk SSL? So I'll add 443. Now these are specific TCP port ranges and you could actually theoretically add a high port range for perhaps some random connections. So let's just do that 1024 to maybe say 2999. UDP can be defined just like TCP with specific definitions or broad ranges. One pro tip to keep in mind though, if you are going to be defining UDP ranges, please do not send UDP 53 or DNS traffic through a ZPA tunnel. It is better to leverage the DNS resolution of the ZPA process where the client Z app looks up the ZPA uh, policy engine to confirm that the host name or FQDN is available for the user rather than send the DNS through the entire tunnel. In this case, I'm just gonna define one range here. For this demonstration, we're not going to dive into the double encryption or bypassing and the health checking and so forth. We'll address that later on. So we're done now. We've created the application segment in its first stage. Let's click on next and go to the next period. So now we're being asked to define a group of application segments. Think of this as a collection of application segments together. I could create a new one, but actually what I'm going to do is select one of my previous ones. So I'll click in here and I'll use my Azure based application segment group. Then once you've done that, click on next. Moving forward, we are now brought to the server group definition. Server groups 
are critical to the functionality of the ZPA policy rule. With application segmentation, especially in those application seg segments where you're not sure exactly what your applications are running, which we will cover in some depth in the discovery section of this program, but for now, let's define a server group, give it a name, and then we can turn on or off the discovery. The discovery feature allows us to identify the applications that your users are talking to within that application segment group. To make sure we assign that discovery feature, we need to select a set of connectors. So I'm gonna pick the recently created new connectors here and click done and then next. Finally, you can see an overview of what you've just created. The application segment is now completed, so click on save. We've created an application segment, we need to add it to policy. So let's click on edit policy and we'll be taken to the application policy engine. So it's pretty easy here. We just need to add a new rule. We're gonna call this the CRM test. You can give a description if you'd like. You can even add a message to the user once they're allowed access or blocked access. So you can define it one way or the other. We're going to now define the application segment. That's the segment we just defined. So let's do a search for CRM. There it is. Add that and then we're gonna find the users or the attributes of the users that can connect to that. I'm gonna to say today, anyone's allowed access and they can connect from any client type. So let me click save. And now I have a policy rule shown here in my access policy, allowing anyone to get access to the CRM application.